Hello everyone! Today we will be taking a look at the relationship between Sana and Nazumi in Kadocha. I plan on making a video series for them similar to my Sana and Akito video series in the future, but I wanted to briefly touch on this topic as it's something I've been thinking about for a long time. This video will be focusing on the manga as I will be discussing scenes that take place within volumes 9 and 10, which never saw the light of day in the anime. If you don't want major spoilers for the series, I would recommend coming back to this video after finishing the manga. And without further ado, let's jump into this brief analysis of Sana and Nazumi's relationship. We are introduced to Nazumi Kimura in Volume 3 of the manga. Sana is set to film a commercial for Band-Aids, where she dresses and plays the role of a ballerina. During the shoot, Nazumi peeks behind the curtain of the stage, before coming towards Sana with a bouquet of roses and a band-aid for her injured foot. Nazumi stands above Sana as she is crouched down in pain, when she reaches for the band-aid. The commercial is finished in one take, and this is when Nazumi reveals to Sana that he knows her secret. Backstage, Sana confronts Nazumi, and it's revealed that he knows all about her and her mother, which at this point in the manga, we are unaware of what he is referring to. Later in Volume 3, Nazumi reveals that both him and Sana were babies at the Kimura Academy, an orphanage. Sana's mother's book is released shortly after, and we find out the truth of her birth, and how she was abandoned as a baby on a park bench when Misako found her. Later in the manga, we find out Misako's book My Daughter and I didn't exactly tell the full story about Sana's past. During Volume 9, Sana and Akito finally begin dating, but their happy times together are cut short by the threat of the Hayama family having to move to America. Due to Sana's stress and anxiety from the situation, she is unable to smile, which Misako calls the doll syndrome. Misako reveals to Rei that this has happened once before when Sana was little, after Sana is reminded of her abandonment when she was performing as an orphan in a play. Misako wrote a chapter about Sana's doll syndrome for my daughter and I, but cut it from the book as Sana was unaware that it ever happened to her. Just like the current situation, Sana doesn't realize that she is unable to smile. So what made little Sana return to her usual self? Shimura, the Karata's maid, remembers that when Sana began to smile again, she mentioned meeting a foreign girl, and everyone starts to think that this girl is the key to getting Sana to return to normal. Now, Zumi is informed about Sana's condition, and reveals to everyone that he happened to meet Sana around the time of the play that triggered her doll syndrome. Now, Zumi explains that at that age, he was sometimes mistaken for a girl for his facial features and long hair. He tells the story of when he met Sana back then and how she was crying while walking home. She had gotten a bad grade on a math test and was sad because she didn't feel like a good girl. Young Nazumi tries to cheer her up, and Sana was finally able to smile again. Sana's family and friends decide to recreate the event from her childhood to see if it will get her to smile again. Akito pretends to be Sana while Nazumi plays himself, and they go into Sana's room and act out the moment from the past. After this, Sana talks to her mom and tells her that she felt that she had to be an extra good girl by getting good grades and being well behaved, so her mom would love her more which stems from her fear of abandonment. Sana remembers her interaction with young Nazumi and how he reassured her that she doesn't need to prove she's a good girl for her mom to love her. Unfortunately, even after this memory resurfaces, Sana still remains with a blank expression on her face. However, she does feel more indebted to Nazumi and briefly wishes to be comforted and helped by him once more before she ultimately comes back to herself after seeing how much pain Akito is in during the whole situation. There have been many times throughout the series where Nazumi has helped Sana in subtle ways. When My Daughter and I was first released, Nazumi tries to direct the media attention on himself and away from Sana since she's being harassed by reporters. Nazumi also helped bring Sana and Akito closer together by talking about how Sana loved someone else other than him on TV, so Akito would know that Nazumi and Sana were never actually a couple. Nazumi's love for Sana is very genuine and never comes out in ugly ways. For example, we never see him doing anything resentful towards Akito out of jealousy. I love Nazumi as a character for this. 
After reading the manga over and over again, though, I did notice a subtle hint in the very first interaction we see with Sana and Nazumi that foreshadows everything that has and will happen between them. For the most part, Nozumi has been a place of healing for Sana, which is represented in the interaction they have during the filming of the commercial. The commercial features an injured girl in need of healing, and a boy who is willing to selflessly give that to her. I believe that mangaka Miho Obana created this scenario for a reason. It acts as an analogy for Sana and Nazumi's entire relationship. While Sana might not be injured physically, she is still suffering emotionally and psychologically at this point in the series, even if most of it is unconscious. She still desires to have someone come and save her and give her the reassurance that she is loved and won't be abandoned again. Nazumi has shown time and time again throughout the series that he is always willing to help her without any hesitation. Nazumi holds the bouquet of roses behind his back while offering aid to Sana, and I think this gesture represents how he is more interested in Sana's well-being than his desire to be with her romantically. Nazumi had many opportunities throughout the series to take advantage of Sana while she was sad and lonely, but he always made her needs a priority. He knew deep down that she needed and loved Akito. Even in the Kadocha sequel, Deep Clear, Nazumi was unable to be with other women because he loved Sana so much. Ultimately, Nazumi put Sana's happiness above his own needs, which is illustrated in the commercial between the two. Thank you for watching this video. This has been a topic I've been really excited to share for a while, and I hope those of you watching found it interesting or thought-provoking. Please like, comment, and subscribe for more Kadocha content in the future. See ya!